I switched back to iPhone SE from iPhone 15 Pro and I've been using it for the last several weeks. And the polar opposite opinions are boiling in my mind. Is it the best value phone or is it the worst iPhone to buy in 2024? How far are these two phones from each other? So here is the quick video on my love and hate relationship with iPhone SE. So just to say the obvious, iPhone 15 Pro is the best phone made to this day. But, but, let's start with the thing that can instantly create some hate in the comments. I love Touch ID and I hate Face ID. I mean, it works okay, but it can lag or don't even work in some situations. You can call me weird in the comments, but on my 15 Pro, I don't use Face ID. I use a passcode 100% of the time. So the Touch ID in my case is one of the great things about SE, as well as its whole design. It already feels like it's from a different era of tech and looks nostalgic. It's like a tiny little gadget that fits perfectly in the palm of my hand. I love how lightweight it is and how you don't even notice it in your pocket. And I can peacefully carry it without a case, knowing that it costs just a couple hundred dollars, which I simply cannot do with the iPhone 15 Pro. As much as I wish to carry caseless, I still try to be financially responsible. Comparing the sizes of SE and 15 Pro, a 15 Pro feels like a brick. Sure, Apple made 15 Pro lighter than the 14 Pro, but it's still a huge thing in your hands. And as Chris Evans said, because as I hold it, you use the pinky to like brace it and it feels too heavy. It's too heavy. Okay, the design of the iPhone SE is great, but with more compact design comes more compact details like screen iPhone SE has a small 4.7 inch display with huge bezels compared to 6.1 inches on 15 Pro. Yeah, for all of my day to day stuff, 4.7 inches feels enough, but of course it has low resolution, not even a full HD display, with old LCD technology, not really bright, not really contrasty compared to the new iPhones. So, of course, if you are a more active social media user, 15 Pro will be more suitable with a much larger and brighter display with higher pixel density. While browsing social media, especially in the bright daylight, iPhone SE display is a lot less visible. At the same time, since I switched to the iPhone SE, I've had to find new ways to procrastinate. The screen is smaller, less exciting, the social media is less addicting, but I still can catch up with the content from my favorite creators on iPhone SE. Basically, with iPhone SE, I reduce my screen time by 20-30%, so if you want to take a minimalist approach and reduce your phone usage, SE is perfect for this. While experimenting with SE these past few weeks, I tried using it more and more to test the battery performance, and it's kinda bad. I need also to say that the battery health on my SE is at 76%, so maybe on a fresh phone it will be better, but as of now, my iPhone SE battery barely makes it till the end of the day. Well, iPhone 15 Pro can sometimes last for a day and a half. For some people, the battery life can be crucial, and honestly, for me as well. But after a few weeks of using iPhone SE, I kind of get used to carrying a battery back with me. Even though the iPhone SE is smaller and more affordable than the iPhone 15 Pro, it is still shockingly in great device when it comes to processing power. That's because the third generation of iPhone SE has the same A15 chip as the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus, which is great for this small, compact and cheap phone. This means that the iPhone SE is just as fast and efficient as its far more expensive fellow iPhones. Obviously, the main difference between the 15 Pro and SE, in my opinion, is camera. Just look at the sizes. The difference is huge. In 2024, 15 Pro has the best camera to have at your fingertips. 48 megapixel Pro RAW, countless features and three different lenses really make the difference. SE, on the other hand, has only one 12 megapixel camera with a wide lens. If you put together photos and videos that were shot in the same light conditions, they look very similar to each other with high dynamic range and clarity. If we look closer, of course, we will find huge differences, but for quick snaps of your cats, it really doesn't matter what camera you use. But for me, as a person who takes photos and videos as a professional for years, of course, I'm obsessed with the 15 Pro. It has a better sensor, better quality, better clarity, and also I love playing with the different lenses on the 15 Pro. Basically, it single-handedly replaces 80% of my camera gear. But as for general camera features, SE is just as good. You can shoot 4K 60 frames per second on 15 Pro and on SE in a standard daylight environment you get results that are close to each other. If you casually post on socials or just send photos of your cats and dogs to friends and family, SE camera is a decent phone. And in my opinion, it has been great for starting your content creator journey. One thing about the iPhone SE that really stands out is its affordability. The iPhone 15 Pro is one of the best phones right now, but it's also an expensive phone. The iPhone SE, on the other hand, offers most of the features of the iPhone for half the price for the new one. And you can also find some mind-blowing deals on Amazon and get third generation for $200 and second generation for as low as $130. Save some money, get similar features, Apple ecosystem, and steal the software updates. Why not? I think it's an overkill. 
A year ago, I said that I can really see myself doing all my work with the iPhone SE. And in fact, I actually use it as a secondary phone and do most of my social media work with it. Overall though, I am really happy with my decision to fully switch to the iPhone SE for several weeks. It's a great phone that offers everything I need in a compact and affordable package. And it also helps me to stay focused on my work without getting distracted by unnecessary apps. For the 2024, it is still a great iPhone, especially for $200. But there are already rumors of the new iPhone SE, which will definitely be the greatest value for my smartphone of all time. And I'm really excited about it, but it will likely launch in 2025. So for at least a year, I'm good with this old one.